Okay, this is Bill Palm here again in Northern Oregon doing a little mini demo, this one on skies. Uh, if you look closely in the screen right now, you will see a little bit of uh, white cloud, light sky, and a suggestion of shadows uh, on the undersides and to the right side of this cloud in particular. See the gray right here. So, this is a nifty technique for and a very simple technique. Uh, I'm going to complicate it ever so slightly by including two different colors, uh, blue for the sky and gray for the shadows. And what you do is you mix up your color here, which I will do now. Then you paint clear water on the sky area. and leave some whites. Leave some areas of the paper that are basically untouched. I want to get a little more color in here and I can add water. Notice I added a little alizarin crimson to my ultramarine blue and thylo blue to dull it just a little bit. Not very much. That's about right right there. Over here, I take a second brush, which I think you can see, there it is. That's, these are one inch, simple one inch flats. I could use basically any size that gives me an appreciable size. That's um, Payne's Gray over there. I'll uncover my other palette in case I need more room. So what I need right now is another brush. This one, I want to keep like pure water. I picked up some water in it and also use a spray bottle. Let's come over here to our white paper Oops. and back up a little bit. There we go. So you can get down a little further. There we are. Yes. So I want to come across this paper with plenty of water and skip some areas of white paper that are left dry and not touched with the water. This is going to be basically a sky so we keep it simple and I can concentrate on explaining it. There we go. And also spray Use a little spray bottle here and there. It's a little bit of pool of water there. Okay, so I've left a few white spots. A little hard for them for you to see them at this angle, but trust me, they're there and they'll show up in a minute. I take my brush that has the blue in it first. Get plenty of pigment and water in that brush. I come across here and I form some cloud shapes. When I go across the areas where the paper is dry like as in here and here right here at the moment you get a sort of a hard edge effect which gives you a line of definition for the clouds. I just kind of fill in the sky area at the top, not really necessary but what it does is it gives you a better feeling that it's a sky up here, not just a bunch of blue paint on the paper. Come in here with some areas like that. That's my blue. Now, while it's still good and wet, I take my gray. Let's say that the sunlight is coming from the upper left down this way here, right like that. So I come into the cloud areas and I add a little gray aiming toward the right side for the shadow areas of the clouds because that's basically where they would be. So quick I um, lay down that brush, pick up the brush that has just water. This is a one and a half inch just happened to be the one that I wanted to use. Don't want to put too much water in there. Got a little too much water but it should be alright. And just kind of soften those edges as it floats up into the clouds there. 
So, uh, what I've done here is created some clouds, and I can see here I am picking up a color with my pure water brush, and now it's I'd have to clean it out to use it. I want to get those paints gray dries a lot lighter, you know, like 30, 40 percent or whatever, somewhere in there. So I wanted to get those uh, shadows in those clouds a little better. Like that. So you see how simple that was. I, I wet my paper. Maybe I let the uh, water soak in a little bit to the paper. I left purposefully some dry areas on the paper that were untouched by the water that I pre-wet it with. So that's important. So uh, when we have the dry areas and you get these little rough edges to the clouds which provide a nice contrast to the very soft effects of those clouds at the same time. So you can see a little dry area right here and some over here that perhaps aren't too good but you know we could modify those if uh, this is an uh, important painting to me. And what's not important is how well I pull this off or whether you like these shapes or that shape or this shape or whatever. What is important is that you see how you can go about it by leaving the dry areas, wetting the rest of the paper, coming in with the blue, then coming in at the shadow areas of the clouds with some gray. And I use simple pigments. I'm not advocating to use these particular pigments for a sky. You can use whatever pigments you like and whatever colors. For instance, I could get this gray real well out of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. <coughs> Excuse me, actually a better gray. I could use uh, cerulean blue up here or almost pure thylo blue up here or mix it a little bit like I did with uh, ultramarine blue. Uh, the colors are up to you, but it's the technique that I'm demonstrating here today. And it's a fairly simple technique and very effective, particularly when you want a sky, a little water pooling down here, that is rather dynamic and uh, got a lot going on up here in the cloud area. So that's the mini demo on uh, two-tone skies uh, wet and wet with some of the areas of the paper left dry to help you form rugged, ragged, hard, dry brush type edges. Hope you enjoy this and we'll come back for more. Bye bye for now.